Hi all, just in case you're not following my community tab on King's Crusher channel, I thought I should mention that if you play one E4 and you want something against the Sicilian defense, I have actually a new course on the Smith Morrow Gambit, which many of you kind of consider quite dangerous and have called it my signature opening. One or two of you think it's my signature opening for the live commentary blitz. I have been using it over the years with great success. And in doing the course, I, I did actually sharpen my theoretical understanding to such an extent that some of the systems seem like on the verge of, you know, really being crushable. One such such system, just very recently, I was playing against a Fide Master, Vladislav Krasikov, on Lee Chess in the weekly Super Blitz. And let me show you this game. So I kicked off with E4, and he did accept the gambit and he played e6 knight f3 and he played an accelerated queen's fianchetto setup so this does have some perks to it it does have something going for it it's trying to exploit the bishop with tempo and quickly put pressure on the center sure but i castled knight e7 this is a little bit like mixing systems together in a way bishop g5 already i was very very comfortable here and he plays knight c6 and i play a4 and in the course i do emphasize about this notion of bouncy roads of attack it's kind of amplified my understanding that actually a4 to e8 for example is super critical here it can be so b b4 is played you'll note that Quite often, you know, this line piece, it needs these lines to kind of tap into. And yeah, I'm using different kind of arrows. This is a thematic move, which tries to break open this diagonal. He plays d6. And now there is actually a positional threat to factor in knight a5, because that would shut out this diagonal. In this particular game example, and I did play this player, to be fair, um, two or three times in this tournament. And when he got to play knight a5, he did actually win one of those games. I documented that in this course as well. It's an evolving kind of course as well. But in this game example, I played a5 here. And the game was very, very quickly over. He really actually just completely underestimated this diagonal. And this was the Fide Master that kind of won the whole tournament. So this is probably one of his most devastating losses in the tournament. After e takes, knight takes a5. I just played bishop a4 check and he has to resign i couldn't believe it 14 moves there are there are quite a few setups if you look at wiki that seem to be official because they're named setups but the accelerated queen's bishop fianchetto system along with the chicago they seem extremely shaky to me when you put them under the engine scrutiny and if you check out my course that engine scrutiny is in the theoretical sections so there are amazing resources to be found and sometimes, you know, you're not even playing ED, you're playing a move, strange moves like rookie one, which the theoretical sections pick up because you're trying to rupture, you know, multiple diagonals and avenues to the king. Checkmate ends the game after all. So if you want a, a quick uh, check of my course, well, it's at King's Crusher TV uh, slash chess courses. It's, it's the newest one featured there. And there are mega discount codes uh, available for the next few days. I'll be renewing. The most extreme discount codes early next month as well if you miss it this month but there's there's a 30 day one featured on that courses page if we just generally look uh, there's quite a few abilities i've sort of determined that you get from the course basically but let's have a look at the structure to show you how it's structured i do quite a long introduction actually because i feel uh, it, it is a kind of model for understanding how to play against certain openings uh, and how to evolve your repertoire and other general concerns uh, so if you have a good structure you can hang your model games on that structure really more conveniently and as in a sort of continuous delivery model which you, you really want so you want a kind of evolving repertoire which is easy to evolve so the structure which the course provides first i, I look at the evolution so i had great fun and interest looking at these games and you know we see 
even very, very famous players like Kierzarski using it. We see Tartko, the, the very famous witty quotation guy, Tartkoisms, uh, you know, like uh, all the blunders they're waiting to be made. That's one of the classics. Pierre Mora was a correspondence player. Uh, so Smith, uh, I look at his, you know, grandmaster encounters. It so t turns out, and this might have put people off because of the Smith tournament, but the thing is that tournament that Smith played in was like one of the strongest tournaments held in the United States for many, many years, since about the 1930s. It was sponsored by a chicken company, and people were not chicken to accept the gambit, but he was out of his depth. Although a strong filet master, he was out of depth out of depth in that tournament in my view and in a way it made the smith moral gambit kind of hide in plain sight but if you actually look at it with latest engines most of the lines are, are, are an edge for white so i talk about the, the various uh, setups and how to punish them basically the various setups become kind of virtual set of punching bags to practice on and so it's sort of layered with theoretical discussions and then going on to um more practical examples and even my own classic ICC games, which I've often found like the strongest examples against IMs, even some of these. And so we look at each setup and we try and get the downsides theoretically. And then, you know, master games and then layered to potentially, you know, some of my blitz games as well. So that layering, you know, from, from the lab to practice, it's like it's supporting multiple repertoires in a way, a one day repertoire at the extreme or maybe even correspondence chess, cl a club player's repertoire for, you know, evening chess, and, you know, the online, you know, casual blitz, or even bullet, you know, use. So you can kind of separate your virtual repertoires, all the, the, the traps, the tasty traps you might want to reserve for the faster time limits, for example, because uh, people might actually fall into those traps very, very easily. Uh, you know, an example of a trap, by the way, that I've mentioned if we go back to the board, uh, which I just even used last night to come fourth in, in the elite, uh, you know, bullet arena, was against a very, very strong player generally. Uh, basically, uh, you know, he's playing the knight f6 casually, and I play bishop d3. And, you know, in bullet, you know, this is a the temptation, but the thing is, you play e6 here, and I've won quite a few games of this, and now you're, you're just checkmating onto the next game. You can either take with the queen or the bishop. So, you know, that just happened last night. So, if you have the repertoire for your different time limits, that makes it even more effective, in my view. Let's go back to this. So, basically, I've set up these punching bags, and we're going from a theoretical perspective to a much more, you know, practical perspective. And that often reinforces the theoretical section. So, you see all of these systems covered. And also, even the decline variations, I go into depth in these, because this was one of my concerns from the outset of even creating the course I mentioned in the community tab about the knight f6 but the thing is with knight f6 we can leverage the alapin players the grandmasters playing the alapin we reach the same positions just by a different move order and some of my own games again you know round off some of the sections you know from the classic ICC games so yeah I, I'm really a fan of this particular course I think it has a scarcity value other gambits like the king's gambit there's so many things black can do the evans gambit is much later on i mean those are both against e5 anyway there are of course other gambits against the sicilian which are also interesting and other systems like the grand prix attack which might be a subject for future courses because the sicilian is such a big thing and you know very very popular and one thing I don't want to go into people's pet Sicilian line. So I had a lot of fun with this. And the beauty of it is the real beauty, which gives it a scarcity value. It's like being theoretically prepared in something which will come up in your territory quite a lot and is the open game. So a bit unlike, you know, the London system, it's more of an open game. And what that really means is your, your tactics are boosted when you do detailed post-mortem analysis of these games because they're sharp tactical encounters and that really sharpens the tactical teeth so to speak so i had a huge you know experience <laughs> doing this and i think it has benefited and sharpened my own smith morrow gambit play recently and the course is evolvable as well any new lessons i will just bolt on 
and there's a great also there's a great PGN section uh, to check out so even my entire like working directory I I put my whole working directory with the you know the annotated PGNs Matulovic Esman games um, my games from the internet chess club chess 24 website so all of those are also in the downloadable sections uh, there and you know some some, some sh short conclusions but yeah a lot of my conclusions ended up in the introductions that was in retrospect because I, I didn't want to assume I knew you know, the, these great insights so, you know I left it until the last available moment to do the intro sections and that's why the intro is actually over two hours this is unheard of generally of any course on, on, on Udemy at least it's completely unheard of but it's 27 hours in total I had a total blast doing this course so I recommend you to check it out you can learn a lot more to boost your tactics and your attacking skills and just have a lot more fun in chess generally when playing you know with one e4 so you might be frightened of all those flavors of the Sicilian defense I personally believe this is a fantastic weapon of choice which the engines are increasingly validating as having more than enough compensation for the pawn and so does you know Vichy Anand because Vichy Anand chickened out of course against Esselman with my F6 <laughs> okay so I hope you uh, check it out check out the free samples and you know maybe give me some feedback in in this video okay in the comments okay thanks so much